Alrighty, welcome to Deal or No Deal. So first I'm going to explain the rules and I kind of made this game um, myself. It's a game that I use with my classroom for a testing review. And what I do is I just made it on slides and we write the, uh, I wrote the each type of question on each slide and you write the answer on the same slide as well, then you uncover the answer. If students get it correct, they get to keep the money that is on the slide or they get to make a deal or or not make a deal. However, not all the slides have um, this opportunity. Okay, all right, so we are going to uh, get started. So I am going to pick, you pick a case. So I'm going to pick, um, let's see, slide 13. And slide 13 says, ooh, a thousand dollars says, what is a makerspace? So I'm gonna answer the question. A makerspace is any uh, type of uh, creative space where kids get to create something and explore it. However, the book does mention that there is no one size fits all. Okay, and then I'm gonna uncover the uh, the answer, and it does say, though there is no one size fits all, a makerspace something where students are able to explore and create projects. So and since I did get this question right. I am going to give myself 1,000 points. Then I go back here and I just grab the X and uh, pick the number that I had chosen. And I do want to apologize for my parrot screaming in the background. All right, so I have 1,000 points so far. Now I am going to pick another one. Let's see, I'm going to pick uh 25 let's see uh oh let's see what is going on here the 31 there you go what is the keyword in a makerspace so the keyword in a makerspace is a create to create to creating so i got that right so i am going to be adding uh 300 points to my score so far i have a thousand uh 300 okay and i keep score for this game since it is on a little homemade game i usually keep score on a on a whiteboard for my kids i assign one of my kids to um to to keep score for us so i'm gonna put this on 25 Okay, now I'm going to pick another case. I'm going to pick a uh, case three. Let's see. Sometimes I have to. There we go. Well, why does it keep going to that question? <laughs> okay. Here it is. So what can stop librarians from incorporating uh, makerspaces? So some things that can stop librarians from incorporating spaces, uh, makerspaces are the money, how much it costs, it's messy, it's noisy, let's see, money and time, yes. So that is another 300 points. So I'm going to add 300 points to my score. And I'm going to go back to it and I'm going to mark off slide case. Okay, now I'm going to pick 22. How can we convince admin to include makerspaces in the library? So I included this question because this is something that I know my admin would personally be like, oh, that's another cost in the um in the budget uh, i don't think so but you know admin loves our test score so we can say that the maker spaces can be linked to something that is tested especially like um especially in math and science for at least in texas uh fifth grade standards that's very big so i'm gonna give myself 400 so i'm up to 2000 uh points okay so i'm gonna mark it off I forgot what slide I chose. I think it was this one. Okay, I'm gonna go to slide eight. Why are libraries a perfect home for makerspaces? Libraries are the perfect home for makerspaces because they are the biggest building, the biggest classroom in the library. They provide knowledge and are storage centers for information. 
Okay, so now we got to this slide that I can either get the $200 or I can make a no deal. So let's say I'm going to make a no deal hoping that I can get more money. So let's see. Oops. Oh my gosh. Let's see. And I got $600. So now I'm going to add $600 to my money and i have 2600 sometimes they'll get more money than this but other times they will get less so it's really a, a gamble okay so i'm gonna mark it off that was slide eight okay all right so let's see i'm gonna go to 22 oh this one was the one i had already done so that means i marked one off Okay, let's see. So I chose seven. Can maker spaces be in the classroom? And the answer to that is yes. There's some teachers that are already actually incorporating maker spaces in their classroom. And once teachers see it in the in the library, guys, they may even ask to collaborate and um, to have one in their classroom as well. So I'm gonna add this 300. I have 2,900. This was 21, and I'm just going to go in order because I keep forgetting which one it is. Kids are usually better at remembering which one it was. <laughs> All right, so this one I had done as well. So I mean, I go to 15. Okay, what can be a makerspace that is often overlooked? And this I learned in the book, which was actually board games, because it says that a lot of kids actually don't have the opportunity to... Uh, play board games at home and this might be their first time now some kids say that they're uh, naturally good at board games but other kids uh, learn to have um, spatial awareness and they learn to think about the decisions that they're making while they're playing so I'm gonna do this a no deal and hopefully it's more money and it is so I get 300 points so I have 3,200 so I'm gonna go back I'm going to mark it off. Okay, and I'm going to go to 11. What can be the downside of maker spaces? Like I said, some of the brains are afraid of the cost. It can be no noisy. It can be loud. It can be messy. And, yep, and time and management, definitely. So I think that's the biggest step and start in thinking, I don't have time for it. How am I supposed to do another thing? But it really is uh, worth it. So I have 3900 uh, okay, next question. When is the best time to have maker spaces? Let's see. So the best time to have maker spaces, it is up to you and your library schedule. Um, one suggestion that I did like from the book is you can have it as rotations or centers. You can start off with one or two and then keep adding uh, them on. Okay, so I'm going to add 500. So I have 4,400 points. And I'm going to take that off. I'm going to go to slide nine, seven. What is the UTEC model? So the UTEC model is a model that is used to help you implement maker spaces. The U stands for using. The T stands for tinkering. The E stands for experimenting. And the C stands for creating. Yay, I got that all right. So let's see. This time I'm not going to make a deal. I'm just going to keep the 200. Sometimes kids do that, and but they still like to see what they would have uh, missed out on, or if they saved it. So I would have missed out on two hundred dollars more. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next one. What are some space needs for make for maker spaces? So we have to make sure that we have. A flexible space if there's furniture around we have to be able to move it for bigger projects there has to be a space to stand in a sitting place internet access of course an electrical outlet near in case they need to connect anything easy to clean floor especially we're using glue glitter neocrusting stuff you don't want to use a carpet area a collaborative area such as tables where all the kids can stand around and they're not fighting for a space. And it's also really awesome to see displays with past projects or even examples of what it can look like. Okay, so I'm going to add 900. 
So we have 5,500. And I go to my next question. What is the biggest benefit of a makerspace? So let's see. It helps develop children into problem solvers. Let's see, I have 100. So I'm going to say no deal. And I can add 500 to my score. And that is 6,000. Okay. Now this game is kind of a little bit um, subjective. Sometimes kids give answer that is right, but is not the answer there. It's really up to the host to decide. Are makerspaces physical? Uh, yes, makerspaces are physical, but they can also be virtual. You can also have a virtual space online. So I'm going to add that 300. That's 6,300. I'm going to put my X here to get that one. I'm going to go to question 24. Where can I get money for makerspaces? So the big question, where can we get money for uh, makerspaces? And that is you can allow, you can um, make an allotment from your budget or you can ask for a grant. You can try donors choose, but also remember that it does not always have to be a new purchase, look for recycled materials or ask for donations from home. You can send a letter. You can even ask teachers as well. So I'm at 100. Okay, I'm going to put my little X. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. What are the five C's of the 21st century learning skills? Let's see if I can remember these. I know one of them is critical thinking, creating. Um, <laughs> and I really can't remember, so I am not going to give myself these points. Uh, critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, and citizenship. So I didn't get these points. So if I didn't get them, I'm going to take away a thousand dollars. So now I'm at five thousand four hundred. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go to seven. This one says, what are some qualities of a space maker? So in order to have maker spaces, you yourself as a person also have to have some qualities, which are being a good listener, being creative, being open-minded, not having that mindset of thinking, oh, it's going to get dirty, it's going to be loud. If you have that mindset, maker spaces are not for you, okay? It's like I said, persistent, curious, a DIYer, reliable, collaborative. And I'm not going to make a deal. Let's see if I can get more money. Yay, I got 500. 5,000. I'm at 5,900. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay. Go to the next question. What are some of the samples of simple maker spaces? So in the book, Miss uh, Dr. Kwan mentioned that when she started maker spaces, she had a how to draw station and she had some Lego, um, a Lego maker space where she put a book about how to create different types of dinosaurs. I thought that was really cute, and I think everybody has some Legos and uh, how to draw books in their library so let's see i'm not gonna make a deal so i can get more money and i actually got less money but that's okay five thousand nine hundred fifty this over what is the best way to introduce a makerspace and i learned this from the book the best way to introduce a makerspace is by introducing a problem so one of the ways that Dr. Cohen did it when she started it, she would show them like a flyer or a newspaper article of something that they were trying to solve. And I thought that was really awesome. So I'm going to give myself 500. I'm going to paste this one. All right. Almost there. All right. What are some ways to get materials for maker spaces? And like, well, there was another similar question to this. So this can be like looking through the recycler bins. You don't want to look like a crazy person, but you know, it's for the kids. <laughs> looking through the uh, recycler uh, uh, to get like maybe like cardboards or uh, papers, tissue boxes. You can also ask for donations from home or even just looking for it through the cupboards in the library or at your own home trust me you'll find things that you don't need but they can be helpful for 
the maker species. So we're at 7,050. All right. Okay. Do administrators know what maker spacers are? Uh, most administrators do not know what they are or they have never heard of them. So when you introduce this, it's okay to explain it to them. And you can even uh, show them some examples and why the benefits are of it. And remember to always connect the two testing standards. That is the secret. <laughs> And that is 400 points, 7,450. Let's see what I would have missed out on, 500, so I lost them, 500. That's okay, so, so I'm just playing against myself. I'm gonna win anyway. The point is to make teams with your, uh, with your kids. All right, so let's see, 18, and they can also steal points from each other if they get it wrong. You don't have to uncover the answer. You can let the next team uh, steal the points. How can you market your market space? So you have this awesome uh, maker space uh, ready, but how can you get the kids in the library? Well, you can uh, promote it on social media. You can put it in the morning announcements. You can uh, create flyers for it, or the mouth, a newsletter, or a library website. So I'm going to give myself a thousand points. Yay, I'm at a thousand, eight thousand four hundred and fifty. Two more questions. What areas do makerspaces investigate? So these investigate all types of areas such as science, fine arts, STEM or STEAM, industrial, or do-it-yourself activities. That's what's so awesome about them. Kids get to learn from a lot of different things. So I didn't make a deal and I got less money than I would have, 500. It's really fun to do this with the kids because they start groaning and complaining. <laughs> okay, and last question. What is, uh, this one I had already done. What is the UTIC model? And since I had already done this one, I'm gonna skip it over. But we do have the final question. Let's see, the final question, if you get the answer correct, you double your money, but if you get the answer incorrect, you lose half of your money deal or no deal okay so i'm gonna make a deal it says why should all our parents consider incorporating maker spaces and i believe all the parents should consider incorporating maker spaces because they help kids become um problem solvers and it just gets them excited to come to the library and that's what i put and they help the, oh yeah they help students shine out of their academics it's not always about the books and testing they get to shine and, and show off their thinking in another uh type of way so i doubled my money so i had a thousand eight hundred fifty times two i get seventeen thousand nine hundred dollars that is awesome now, if you play this uh, game in the library, I saw um, one of the ideas from another assignment that said that in order to save on space for the maker spaces, not having the kids make a big mess, they allow like library books and the kids have to buy like the stuff they need to create their uh, project. So this would be a great way to incorporate.